now. So record it. Yeah, she's the one. Okay. It's okay. okay. Excellent. Excellent. We thank God for bringing us here today, mm -hmm. for bringing our families together. And it's mm -hmm. for a reason. Usually it means that God is ready to do something. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is ready to yeah. do something. He yeah. said it has it shall come to pass in that day. Yeah. In that day that the bro that the yoke shall be broken from all thy necks. The, the, the burden shall be lifted from your shoulders. The yoke shall be taken off from your neck, and the yoke shall be broken because okay. of the anointing. Now, what does that mean? It means that you have been praying, you have been gathering the power of the Holy Ghost, and you have been and you have been trying, you know, and you have been gathering anointing. Everything that we do with God, we're gathering the power of the Holy Ghost. All these prayers you've been praying for all these years. Now, let me tell you about yokes. The yoke, a yoke is what is put on the neck of an ox to bind it to another ox so that or any beast of burden it can be an ox it can be uh, it can be a horse any beast of burden so that they can pull the wagon or pull a plow all right now there's something that a, there's a start strategy to using um yokes they will usually yoke a stronger animal to a weaker one all right they will not waste energy and use two strong animals no they will yoke a, a strong one to a weaker mm -hmm. one Come knowing on. that the strong one will do all the work they just need the weaker one for balance all right mm -hmm. for balance mm -hmm. so wherever the bigger uh, the stronger one pulls the weaker one is where he will go right the weaker one has no he has no choice in the matter mm -hmm. Now, this is what happens when, they, when there is a captivity in the life of a, of a person. The devil yokes that person to a strong man that will make sure that that person does not escape. And therefore, you want to go right, the strong man will drive you left. You want to go straight, but he will drive you wherever he wants. All right? Now, the yoke is made up of two rods, one on either side of the neck. I'll send you the picture on WhatsApp to see. Now, one on either side of the neck. And the bigger one, you see, that's why Jesus Christ said, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy light. and my burden is light. light. You see, because when the yoke of Jesus Christ, when you are yoked to Jesus, he, now be, he will now be the one that will be directing our lives. He will be the one that will do the work. He will do the work, and of course, will guide us in the right path. But when somebody is yoked to the devil, it's a, it's a, it's a, diff, it's a different bottle of, uh, kettle of, uh, uh, it's a different kettle of fish. It will drive you where you don't want you to go. It will drive you. Anything you want to do, it will make sure that it does not work. But what, what that scripture in um, Isaiah 10, 27 is saying is this, that it shall come to pass in that day. There will be a day that you would have gathered enough anointing and your neck, you see, the anointing makes you fat. Why? Because it is oil. It's the oils of the Holy Spirit. In, in some, in some, in some um, Bible quote, um, Bible versions, it say the, the, yoke, the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing oil. But no, it's because of the oils, the oils of the Holy Spirit that he puts in you to make you robust and fat enough that one day your neck will be fat enough and it will break that yoke and the yoke will be broken because of the anointing. <laughs> That is um, Isaiah 10, 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away. He's talking about the Assyrian here. If we read it from the top, he's talking about the devil. He said, it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder 
and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed. It shall actually be broken from off the neck. From off the neck, it will be broken and destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. The anointing Amen. is the power of the Holy Ghost that yeah. we absorb when we're reading the word of God, when we're doing anything that brings us close to God and we're soaking up power from him. Amen. You are reading the word, you are praying, you are fasting, you are in fellowships, you are gathering anointing. When you are seeking for knowledge about whatever is wrong, you are gathering anointing. And one day, that yoke is going to be broken. You are going to be fat enough Amen. for the yoke to be broken off your neck. Amen. Amen. And all the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, the Bible says one thing that I love so much. And Amen. it says it in two places, which means in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a thing shall be established. Now, this principle is established because the Bible says that my people go into captivity because of ignorance, because they don't have knowledge. Ignorance. My people remain in captivity because they do not have knowledge. Now, a lot of the things that people like us, um, Isaiah, Isaiah, that's Isaiah 5.13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Now, of course, it's also in Hosea 4, but I like this part. Because it says they are gone into captivity. It is, uh, Hosea says, my people are destroyed. But this one talks about captivity that wants to destroy the, a person. It said, because they have no knowledge. It's not because the devil is so powerful that we cannot overcome him. But because we have not learned the knowledge that is necessary to overcome that particular captivity mm. amen amen now, the mm. knowledge the gathering of that knowledge that is necessary is part of what makes our neck to be fat it's part of what makes us to be fat enough gathering anointing to break the yoke from off our necks amen and that's amen. what we're going to do in the next few days now i had two revelations um well i had some revelations about two few days ago, I had a revelation as if I was among Ghanaians and we were preparing a feast. So I knew I was among angels. I know angels were preparing for this feast that we are bringing before the Lord. It's like the time Esther prepared a feast for the king, prepared a feast and is asking. And then he was so pleased and he said, what can I do for you? even up to half of my kingdom. And we are just going to ask the Lord that, Lord, we don't even want up to half of your kingdom. We only want that part of your kingdom that you have earmarked for us, for our families, for our generations. You see, according to Jeremiah 1.10, he said, see, I have set you over the nations and the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, and to build, and to plant that part of your kingdom that you want to give to us because that's the whole purpose why we're on this earth and that's the whole reason why we're having all the battles we've been having because as we are what are we destroying he said i've set over the kingdoms to root out pull down throw down we're destroying for the kingdom of god to expand we have to destroy the kingdom of satan that's what that means and he knows it root out, pull down, destroy, now begin to build and to plant. Begin to build the kingdom of God. Begin to do your part in the work that Jesus Christ said, look, I've done my part. You go and you go into all nations and do what I asked you to do. Hallelujah. And that Amen. is the whole Amen. reason why you're having, we're having all these battles. That's why we have ancestral battles. Because the ancestral gods I say, no, 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 no. You see, you cannot go and serve another God because your ancestors have given you to me. You belong to me. That is the all the battles we're fighting. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes Amen. You know, when you go from battle to battle, you say, and they say they are Christians. 
maybe there's sin in their lives. Don't mind them. Don't mm. mind them. It's because mm. of these things that we are talking about. Mm. And there are certain pointers. There are certain pointers that will make you know that what you are fighting is an ancestral battle. And we'll come to that in a minute. So I had seen last week that angels are preparing. Whenever mm. we're there, preparing a feast for mm. the Lord, mm. part of the feast is when we sing. Part of the feast is when we want to know his word. We want to know his word. We want to know what to do. We want to do his will. Jesus Christ said, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So what we want, what we are basically asking when we sit down to talk about generation issues is that all we want is the will of God to be done in our lives. So they were preparing the words that we are going to share and use to, to battle them because mm -hmm. we cannot do any battle without the word of God. All right. So now, last night, I had two other revelations and that made me so happy. Early morning, actually. I, I saw that uh, I had boiled some corn. Mm -hmm. I had prepared some corn, you know. I've never seen corn with such big kernels. Each kernel so big, almost as big as my finger, the tip of my finger. Big kernels. Mm -hmm. And we, they have been broken into pieces and they had been boiled well. But I saw that angels have put them again on the fire and they boiled them until they were a bit burnt. Mm -hmm. And that usually means it's a burnt offering, becomes a burnt offering. Mm -hmm. So a lot of preparation has gone spiritually. It means that you guys must have been really praying for this program. God mm -hmm. bless you. We will mm -hmm. honor your prayer in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So the second dream was that I went to see a family in Ghana. It's obviously Ghana because I saw those chairs, those white, usually painted white that you put in front of chairs, armchairs, you know, and I had, and they were placed in the garden. There was a nice garden, uh, which had a fence, actually. Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, the grounds have been broken up mm -hmm. as if, you know, when you break up fallow ground, mm -hmm. ground that has been left, you know, without planting, that's what they call fallow ground. And you have broken it up ready for planting. And it had been wet, it had become wet with dew. It was very nice and everything. But what I now saw was that uh, there were a few of those chairs there. What I now saw was that there was a there was a strong man that was roaring and moving around on that place. Now there was also a tree there. Yes, that's very important. There was a tree there, and I knew it was the tree of life. Because what comes from the tree, the fruit that you get from that tree were bread rolls, all right? Very nicely brown bread rolls. And I saw that that family, every time they come to pluck a bread roll from that tree, the, uh, the strong man will grab their hands, take the bread roll from them, and tell them, get me another before you get your own. Get me another before you get your own. Mm. So I wondered, ah, so you are taking all the bread. You know, bread, of course, means money. <laughs> it also means the bread of life. That's the word of God. Mm -hmm. So there's a contention for the word of God in your lives. There's a contention for your, for your promotion, for your finances, for, for, for everything that belongs to you. Because Jesus is the bread of life. Everything that Jesus wants to do in your life, there's a contention. That's what this means. And I told you that there's a way we know sometimes that this is an, uh, this is, um, that this is an ancestral problem because that entity was dressed like an ancient warrior, you know, dressed in loin cloth made of leather. It was in tatters, it was old and everything. And it looked so wild himself. So I watched for a while and I also saw that I also saw that there were earthworms everywhere on that land. It's as if they had been unearthed. They were under the earth and they had been on earth. 
but they were skinny and they were tired and they were weak. Now I'll tell you what that means. Now that entity that I saw, I know what it is, a dragon. You see, when you see it roaring like that and stampeding all over the place, and you know, it's a dragon. And when you see earthworms, you are not seeing earthworms, you are seeing snakes. That's what they are, they're snakes. And it means that that is the strong man and the snakes are the demons. So it means that you, your prayers thus far have weakened the demons, have weakened the demons. They were tiny earthworms. It looks as if they are malnourished. They are even not even pink. So you have weakened the demons, but the strong man is still very active. He's still very active. Now, and I'll tell you what that means. Um, I, let me try and find that scripture. There's a scripture where the Lord told us how to do warfare. And many, and for a long time, the church has missed what the Lord said. You see, what the Lord said is that you cannot, you cannot enter into a strong man's house unless you, unless, unless you bind the strong man. Do you strong remember man. that scripture? Yes. Now, what, what yes. we are saying is that whatever the devil has taken from us, we want it. All right? We want it. We want him to leave us alone. Now, Matthew 12, 29. Matthew 12, 29. He said, or else thou can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods. Take away his goods. Take away what he has taken from you. Because that's what the devil has. He has warehouses where he has taken people's children, children that you have. He has taken their marriage. He has taken their finances. Mm. He has taken their jobs. He has taken their houses. He has taken their joy. He has taken their calling. He has taken everything and locked them mm. up in a warehouse, in various warehouses. Mm. And he puts a strong man in charge of the warehouse. All right? So this is what Jesus is telling us now. He's telling us a secret. You know, there are times when the, when the Lord will be saying something and he will just say one thing that doesn't seem to have any relevance to what he's saying. But it has every relevance. This is actually the focus, should be the focus of spiritual warfare. He said, or oh, else how can you enter into a strong man's house? So there's a strong man and he has a, let's say a warehouse and spoil his goods. That means you have to you have to still take, you have to take his goods that he has taken from you, except you first bind the strong man. And then you will spoil his house. The spoil means to take spoil, to take a booty of war. Now, all this is a very violent, uh, this thing is a very violent action because the strong man is strong indeed. Jesus will not say something is strong unless he's strong. But the beauty of it all, so he's telling us now that sometimes we focus on demons, but it's not the demons that we need to focus on. We need to focus on the strong man. Strong and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Now, it is like, for instance, a, um, a big conglomeration, uh, conglomeration. let's say uh, Lever Brothers, all right? Lever Brothers, they rented a big office building and they are using it for their work, all right? They, they employed everybody, they employed uh, secretaries, they employed directors, they employed all manner of people, including cleaners and so on. And sometimes when we want to do warfare, what we're doing is that we will sack the director, we will sack, uh, we will sack the cleaner. Those are the demons. We will sack the secretaries. We will sack the clerks. But we have let the strong man. The strong man is the chairman. Strong man is Lever Brothers. You see, that is what the Lord is saying here. For you to take back that building, let's say that building belongs to your forefathers. And Lever Brothers have been using it, and they're not even paying. They stop paying. And you want it back. 
and you come to the office and you are you go and get police to arrest all the people working there. They will simply, IBM or uh, Lever Brother will simply employ more, isn't it? They'll simply employ more. Mm -hmm. So the Lord is telling us that our focus must be on the strong man. And that is why the first thing he showed me about this problem is the strong man in charge. Is the strong man in charge. Amen. Now, and I'm sure you guys have encountered it many times. Yes. But you have to know, you have to know the characteristics of each strong man before you can this before you can know which one is in charge of the matter. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty of it all is that there are only four strong men. There are only four. There are only four. Mm -hmm. Satan, there's Satan, and then there are four strong men. Mm -hmm. All right. There are four mm. strong men that he uses. Mm. Then he put all his principalities, his powers, his spiritual wickedness, you know, and he organized them into a mockery of God's army. The way God has three archangels. He has Michael, he has Gabriel, and there was Lucifer. But Lucifer fell. And guess who is in charge now? It's the church. Is the church, and that's why the devil hates us, because mm -hmm. Lucifer became Satan and devil when he fell, and God gave us his position, and that's why he hates man. So the battle we're fighting is an age-old battle. Mm -hmm. It's an age-old battle, mm -hmm. and it is something that God has fought and won, fought and won, fought and won over the centuries. And the reason Jesus Christ came is to make that battle easier for us to fight. Because he said, you will have many tribulations, but I have overcome the world. Yes. Amen. Yes. On the cross, he disarmed principalities and powers. Those are the strong men. Yes. He disarmed yes. them. He's already disarmed them. Yes. All we are doing when we're doing spiritual warfare is enforcing that atonement work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Mm. You will say, oh, why does why does he desire why does he desire he has disarmed them? Why are they still active? Mm -hmm. Because the devil is wicked. Because the devil is lawless. Because the devil is waiting to see. He doesn't he doesn't engage the rules of, you know, proper warfare. No, no, no. He's like terrorists. You know, terrorists. You know, mm. there are there are rules of engagement when there is a proper war, like the one between uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine, the one between Palestine and there's there is there are rules of engagement, but the terrorists, like Hamas, Hamas doesn't look at those. It doesn't obey those laws. Mm -mm. They don't obey those mm -hmm. laws. Now, that is what the devil is. He's a terrorist. He's an insurgent with all his, with all his uh, millions of, of, of demons. But remember that he fell with only one third of the angels. That means if he has millions, we have double the millions that he has that are still angels that are working for us. Amen. 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 So this strong man is still roaring. He is angry because you have, you have really, really dealt with him. And he's upset. He's angry. He was not wearing a top. Usually that means he has been exposed. All right? When you see an entity, he's just wearing a loincloth. He doesn't have a shirt on. It means he has been exposed. Sometimes you can even see them naked. It means they have been exposed. He was roaring, but you see, he's still active. And all we need is knowledge. In fact, what, what, what would the knowledge that we take from the tree of life, what is showing me even, what that dream is showing us is that even the knowledge you are collecting from the tree of life, he is collecting it from you. He's collecting it from you. And say, no, you can't use it. Why? Because of covenant. 
because of covenant. They are our ancestors. The ancestors have a covenant with him, an agreement, a binding spiritual agreement. And that covenant is still standing. We're going to deal with all that as we go on. Amen. Amen. I think we're not Amen. in a... How many weeks do we have? <laughs> How many weeks do we have? I don't know. It depends on you, mommy. Okay, great. So you are not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry. No, we are not in a hurry. Wednesday, no. uh, Wednesday afternoons are free for me. Okay. Now, now let's let me show you how I know that there are only four strong men, and that is in Revelations twenty one. All right. Okay. Revelations, the book of Revelation is um, no revelations 20 sorry the book of revelation is the book of the end all right what will happen at the end now and and revelations 20 is the white throne judgment what will happen when jesus christ comes and he puts his throne on this earth after he has fought some battles uh the battle of Armageddon. In Revelations 19, as judge, you know, here and there, then he will now sit down and begin to judge everybody. <clears throat> All right. Now, if we look at Revelations 20, you will see that there are four strong men that are mentioned there. The first one is in Revelations, uh, is in Revelations 20, verse 2. Okay, let me read from verse one. He said, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent. That means the one that was in the garden of Eden, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now that tells you that the devil's favorite manifestation on earth is as the dragon, all right? <clears throat> so here we have Satan is bound, and verse 3 said, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, until the thousand years shall be fulfilled. Then he must be loosed for a, a, a season. All right, so the first thing is that he took the, the chief of the devils and he bound him. Then verse 2 says that, and then I, uh, verse 4, and then I saw thrones, and they that sat upon their throne and uh, sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls. Okay, so this is the final judgment when Jesus Christ will come and judge. All right, now let's go down. They judge human beings. And then verse 7 is Satan was loosed again out of that prison. And what did they do to him? Let's look at it. Verse 10. Remember, he was thrown into the bottomless pit, which we call hell now. All right. Then they took him. He said, verse 10, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. So that's number one. The devil, that is the dragon, was cast into the lake of fire, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So there's another entity that is called the beast. That's the antichrist. And there's another entity called the false prophet, and that is Jezebel. So, and let, let me show you the last strong man. Down, 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 down. Verse 14. Verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And this is the second death. That's the second and final death. So they are just four strong men. So it's not as if we need to, uh, you know, the church used to go into that laborious laborious work 
of wondering which demon is in charge of this thing, or which demon. Oh, then they had thousands and thousands of names of demons to, to, uh, to bind and cast out. And half of them are lies anyway, because then they'll be asking the person they're doing deliverance for. Um, so what's your name? And the demon will say, I am so, so, and so. And you have to, and the demons are liars. You have to even bind him and say, I command you to tell only the truth. <laughs> so you can imagine how terrible uh, uh, um, deliverance used to be in those days. But now that we have seen all these secrets, somebody can even do deliverance for himself in his own house. Because all he has to look for the strong man and bind the strong man, and then it will be easy to cast out the rest of the demons. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I immediately recognized that this was the this was the uh, this was the dragon, because um, we can look at because I've been studying them, and let's look at Daniel. Let's look at Daniel uh, seven. In Daniel seven. Daniel saw four beasts. That's another place that shows us that there are only four strong men. He saw four beasts that, was dis that were disturbing the earth. Then God came and judged them. Thrones were set down, just what we read now in uh, Revelation 20. Thrones were set down and they were judged. Now the dragon is the fourth beast. The dragon is the first beast, is the fourth beast. Fourth beast. Um, okay. Verse 7. Daniel 7, verse 7. He said, after this, he had talked about four, three other beasts. After this, in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. That's what I thought. So, it's actually taller than the size of a man. And very big, very very muscular, and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue of it with his feet. And it was diverse, that means it was different from all the other beasts before it, and it had 10 horns. Now, one of the things we've discovered is that this beast is a combination, is a combination of the Antichrist and the serpent, all right, and Leviathan, the serpent which is a water spirit. And this is what we find. Basically, this is the, uh, typically this is the spirit that we find with people that come from riverine areas or from the coastal areas. That's the spirit that troubles them. To trouble them, trouble the work of their hands, trouble their children, just make life very difficult. But this one has been exposed and we're going to deal with him in the next few days. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Amen. Um, today is just preamble, all right? Amen. And what we want to know today is that there is a time frame for every human captivity. Amen. There's a time frame for every human ca captivity. For instance, God said, uh, I will, I will, I will visit the iniquity of the fathers, the fathers that served other gods. I will visit it on the children to the third and fourth generation. You see, after the third and fourth generation, something will happen. God will lead somebody in that family mm -hmm. to a meeting. Okay, now we have blogs online. Like God led uh, Sister Alvina to my blog and so on and so forth. He will lead you to a meeting, a crusade or something where that thing will be dealt with and it will be over. And I believe that this is the time. Now, one of the, one of the, there are two examples we have. God told, God told like the Egyptian captivity. God has spoken about it in Genesis 15, 13 and 14. Genesis 15, 13, and 14. And he said unto Abraham, Know for a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 
400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge. And afterward, they shall come out with great substance. I mean, this was hundreds of years before it came to pass. 400 years before it came to pass. God has already told them about it. And when the time came, there's something God did. When the time comes for any captivity, God will bring a person. He will bring a man. He will bring a man or a woman. Now, in the case of these, in the case of the Egyptian captivity, God brought Moses, isn't it? God brought Moses, yeah. whom he had prepared. Moses was now 80 years. Remember, he had spent 40 years in the court of Pharaoh, learning to be a statesman and to be a warrior. Then God took him into the wild wilderness of Midian, the same wilderness that he's going to pass the children of Israel through to take them to the promised land. He took him there for 40 years and he made him to be a shepherd, going with the sheep in and out, mountains, up mountains, down the valleys, so that he will know the terrain very well. God is our, a strategic God. He's a God of strategy. And when the time came, God just, he simply, uh, he simply encountered uh, Moses and said, I'm the God of your fathers. Introduce himself to him. Now, let me tell you about the 40 years of training in Midian. Now, who was training Moses in Midian? It was Hobab or Jethro, all right? Jethro. He was one of the children of, he was one of the descendants of Abraham. He descended through a woman he married after Sarah died, a woman called Keturah that Ooh. he married. You can read about. Yes, you can read about that in Genesis 25. Let's yes. go there. So that was where Moses now and knew, learned about God. Remember that he was all the time in Egypt. Mm -hmm. From his babyhood, he was in Egypt. Mm -hmm. You see? So um, Genesis 25, are you there? Then again, Abraham took a wife and her name was Keturah. And she bare him Zimram and Jokshan, Medan and Midian. Midian. Usually tribes, generations, they take the they take the name of their progenitor. So he was in the land of Midian. And Jethro was a priest. They said he was a priest of God, but he was a Midianite. This was his father. This was his parent. Amen. This was his parent, a son of Abraham. Who Abraham, remember? If you read uh, Genesis twenty, uh, Genesis seventeen, um, no, Genesis eighteen from seventeen down, the Bible says that Abraham trained his household to know the Lord, and that's why God called him my friend. He said, "Can I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, because I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him to obey the ways of the Lord, that the Lord must bring to pass." the covenant that he promised Abraham. So this is one of those children. He's now a priest. That's why they call him a priest. He was not a false priest. He was a priest of the Most High God. So God took, God, so God took him, God took um, Moses to, to uh, Midian, a priest of Midian. He was not just a Midianite. He was a priest. He was already a priest. He knew all about God. So he trained him for 40 years to know God and to put his trust in him. When God believed that he was ready, God now encountered him <clears throat> by the burning bush. And the Lord said, Exodus 3, 7 and 8. Exodus 3, 7 and 8. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and I've heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them from the land 
from that land into a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Hallelujah. Now I want to I want to tell you today that this is the promise God made for all of us when we came out of Egypt, when we became born again. It's for him to take us out and to bring us in. To take us out and to bring us into our promised land. Derek Prince says it's our land of promises. It's our land where the promises of God Will, be, will come to pass in our lives effortlessly. But there is still that 40 years in the wilderness that we have to go through. During that 40 years in the wilderness, it doesn't have to be up to 40 years. Maybe it's a, let's say 40 seasons of life. We have to come out of Egypt and God has to bring Egypt out of us. That is why sometimes it takes so long to actually get your, uh, to get deliverance. He has to take Egypt out of us. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Amen. one of the things, yeah. among the things that came out with them was the mixed multitude. They called them mixed multitude. There were some that didn't believe in God. There were some, they came out of Egypt just because they were coming out of Egypt. But some of them, Egypt paid them well, well. They prefer to stay in Egypt. And those are the ones that are saying, Moses, have you brought us here to kill us? There's no food here. We prefer to be eating garlic and uh, <laughs> we prefer the flesh pots of, uh, of uh, Egypt where we're eating garlic and all that. So God needed to take Egypt, the love of Egypt out of us. And that is why before you can actually do deliverance and have victory, one of the things you must do is that you must have walked close with God. You must be walking close with God. God will be teaching you about himself. God will bring you close to himself. God will be teaching you. You'll be going to church and learning and learning and learning. Amen? And there are some Christians that will be telling you, you don't need to do deliverance. It's not necessary. God has delivered us. Oh, really? No. God himself said, through James, the Bible says in the book of James, he said, draw nigh to God and we draw near to you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's what we're doing today. We are resisting the devil so that he can flee from us, flee from our families and leave us alone. Amen. Amen. Now, um, the other captivity is the captivity of Daniel. All right? It's, I mean, the, the captivity in uh, Babylon. It took 70 years. It took 70 years. And he has spoken it through Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah 25, 11. Jeremiah 25, 11. He said, and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. 70 years. God has said it. Now, the beauty of it this time is that somebody was already there ready to pray. Daniel 9.2. Daniel 9.2. Daniel was there in the captivity. And he said something in verse, verse 2. He said, in the first year of his reign, of the reign of a particular king. So I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years whereon, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he will accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So Cyrus began to, uh, so um, Daniel began to pray. And the first thing he did was that Daniel 9, that is the, um, repentance. So he began to repent for his sins of his ancestors. And that's what broke, that's what broke the, the jinx. And what did God do? God brought uh, the Medopetian Empire to come and uh, with Cyrus as the captain, I mean the general. They defeated Babylon. And when they defeated Babylon, 
what happened was this. The Middle, the Persians, the Middle Persian Empire was different from the Babylonians. They have different um, principles. They have different strategies of war. When, they, when the Babylonians conquer a place, they will carry away all the people, the strong people, and take them to their land as slaves. But the Persians, the Middle Persian Empire, they have the opposite. They have the opposite principle. They would leave you in your land and say, walk the land and send tribute to us. They will bring people there to make sure you are walking the land and sending tribute to them. So when Cyrus came, Cyrus said, well, who are all these people crying by the rivers of Babylon? Who are these people? These people that are unhappy in the land, they are doing nothing, just sitting by the river and singing. What's going on? He said, oh, those are the ones that we took captive from Israel. He said, why? No, 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 we must send them back. We must send them back. They go and walk the land and send us tribute. Can you see what God has done? So for God to save his people, he can even change the king. He can even change the government for him to save a people that he wants to save. For him to, when he wants to hear the cry of his children, there are different things he can do. He can move mountains and he can change a government. Now, let me tell you the strangest thing that happened was that when Ezra, uh, when uh, we're going to Ezra one now. Was that when Cyrus came, he said something very, very strange. <laughs> very, very strange. Ezra one. He said, now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred of the spirit of Cyrus, the king of Persia. Can you imagine a whole king? He was not even a but he was not even a born again king. He was a heathen king. He turned is now you know Persia is the is Iran right now is Iran. Okay, Iran. so they came from there. <laughs> the king came from there. This Cyrus was an Iranian. The Bible says the Lord stirred up his spirit, and that such that he made a proclamation throughout of his throughout his kingdom and put it also in writing so as soon as he so as soon as he conquered babylon the first year he made this proclamation and put it in writing saying thus says cyrus king of persia the king the the lord god of heaven remember that they said that whatever the Persians have written in the book of Esther. They say whatever he has said and put in writing cannot be changed. You remember? Okay, that is that kingdom. Thus said the Cyrus, the king of Persia, the Lord of heaven. He said, the Lord of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Can you imagine? Of course, by this time, the temple has been broken down. Mm. God now brought another kingdom and put it in the heart of the general to go and build that place, to go and rebuild that place. The God himself, he said, who is there among his people? God be with him. Let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord, the Lord God of Israel. The other thing he did was that everything that was stolen by Nebuchadnezzar from the, from the temple, he gave it to Ezra. He said, go back and go and build. Hallelujah. I believe mm. that family has come to that point today. God has stirred the heart. God is going to stir even the heart of kings Amen. to do you good. By Amen. the time we are finished, we have finished this program. Amen. Now, what we're going Amen. to do today, Amen. what we're going to do today is that is what Daniel did at that time. Amen. Because you see, one of the things we discovered is that though God said the Egyptian captivity is just going to take 430 years, uh, 400 years, it took 430 years. And the theory is that it's because some people were not praying. They were just lamenting. They were just groaning, you know, under the tax masters, they were groaning. They were not, they were not saying the correct things. 
That is the essence of strategic warfare. As I told you, there are only four strong men. And each one has the weapon that you will use in particular passages of the Bible that will get him down. If you use the one for this strong man, for that strong man, it's not going to work. It's like if you have a boil and you are taking the drug for malaria, it's not going to work. Maybe that's why God taught me all these things. Because he knows that I know that there are specific drugs for specific uh, uh, ailments. And that if you use something else, it's never going to work. So there are only four strong men, as we said. And the best way to break their, strang their stranglehold from our hands, to break out of their captivity, is what Daniel has shown us. And that is repentance. The first, he immediately went into fasting and he, and he repented before the Lord. Amen. Now, I will say this as well. It also happened, um, it also happened that Ezra also did a prayer of repentance. Nehemiah did a prayer of repentance. Those were the peoples that were sent back to go and rebuild Jerusalem and the temple and the walls. So repentance breaks the back bone of the enemy. It breaks it. It breaks his hand. And it gets the attention of heaven. That covenant that he thinks, hey, is their father has covenant with me. It breaks the, his hand. Because the Bible says that the fathers cannot eat sour grapes and the children's teeth be set on edge. It breaks his hand from, from whatever he's holding on to in your life. It will break it. I, and I discover that this works. Sometimes when I'm doing uh, counseling and deliverance, I will say, okay, well, the first meeting, what we'll do is that we're going to just pray, pray out repentance, and then you come back tomorrow or something like that. You know, then I'll give you other prayers to be praying. I found that by the time that person comes back, he's feeling better already. Things are beginning to happen. Doors are beginning to open. And whatever was, was, uh, uh, was so tight has begun to be, uh, to be released for that person. Amen. Amen. So today, we're going to Amen. pray a prayer of repentance. Amen. And we're going to use Daniel 9. We're going to open it. Amen. And use Daniel 9. Amen. Let me open my Bible. Place. Sorry? Yes, please open, open your Bible. I have a place where I've, I've changed it to, I have a place where I've changed it to, um, I've changed it to prayer. I'll just find the place and then we'll use that to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you also send it to us, mommy? I'll send it to you later then. Okay. I'll send it to you later. Okay, thank um, you. Let me see if I have it. Um, because you will need to pray it. You keep praying it. There are two prayers. There's another one you'll be praying before we meet. And that is, um, and that is um, based on Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18. Okay. We will pray that one before we meet. Sorry? You said we'll pray Ezekiel 18 before we meet? Yes, you will be praying it before we meet. Okay. I, will, Ezekiel, I, I have Ezekiel. turned it into a prayer and okay. I will send you to you. Okay, no problem. I yes, okay. I will send it to you. So the first thing we need is that we need the Holy Spirit to empower us. Mm -hmm. All right? Amen. As we go into the war, we need the Holy Spirit to empower us. Amen. So let's sing that prayer. Okay. That song. Holy Ghost fire. Fire fire. So let you be praying that prayer where I look for the passage. I'm looking for the passage that Holy we're going to use. Fire. Ghost fire. Fire, fire. 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 fire.
on the day of Pentecost, fire fall on the day. Holy Ghost, fire, fire fall on me. Holy Ghost, fire, fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. Of the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. Lord, on me. Holy Ghost, fire. Fire fall on me. Holy Ghost, fire. Fire fall on me. Fire, fire. Holy Ghost, fall on me. Fire fall on me. Fire on the day of Pentecost. Fire fall on me. Holy, Holy Spirit, fire. we thank you. Let's pray. Yes. Let's pray in tongues, Father. Holy Spirit, fall upon us. Fall upon us. We can do nothing without you. We cannot do anything without you. Holy Spirit, help us. Help us, Lord. Anoint us, Lord, with your fullness. Anoint us with your oils. That will make us fat and break every yoke from our necks and our families and our generations in the name of Jesus. Oh, the anointing that you placed on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says you anointed Jesus Christ without men's job. Anoint us, Lord. Anoint us, Holy Spirit. Anoint us, Holy Spirit. Fall upon us afresh. Fall afresh upon us in the name of Jesus. Fall afresh upon us, Lord, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There's a scripture in Isaiah, Isaiah um, 11. It says, it talks about the sevenfold spirit of God arrested on the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 11, 1 to 4. He said, There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Now, verse 2 talks about the sevenfold ministry of the Holy Spirit. He said, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That L O R D is in capitals, the Spirit of Jehovah, the I am, the man of war. He said, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, mm -hmm. the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Verse 3, I shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. I shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor reprove after the hearing of his ears. Mm -hmm. That means he will allow the Holy, the, the, uh, the Holy Spirit to teach him from inside. We shall allow the Holy Spirit to teach us from inside. We will not judge by what we see, but what God is telling us and what the word of God says. Amen. Amen. Verse 4. He said, but with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and reprove with equity the meek of the earth and shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. So it means that there is a rod in our mouth and that is the word of God that we use. The breath of our lips with the word, that's it. The breath of our lips is the Holy Spirit acting upon the word shall slay the wicked. We're not talking about human beings here. We're talking about the devil and his, and his cohorts. Therefore, let's pray. Please just say after me, Lord, Holy Spirit. Lord, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Lord, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, anoint us now. Anoint us now with the fullness of your oils. The fullness of your oils, which you placed on the Lord Jesus, which you placed on the Lord Jesus. 
the captain of our salvation. The captain of our salvation. And let the fullness of your power. And let the fullness of your power. Rest upon us now. Rest upon us now. As we go into war. As we go into war. In the next few weeks. In the next few weeks. Lord, rest upon us. Lord, rest upon us. And our families. And our families. And our generations. And our generation, generations. By the spirit of Jehovah, the man of war. By the spirit of Jehovah, the man of war. So that we shall fight our battles. So that we shall fight our battles. Under his banner. Under his banner. And go conquering and to conquer. And, and to con conquer. And go conquering, conquering and to conquer. And go conquering and to conquer. Rest upon us by the spirit of knowledge. Rest upon us by the spirit of knowledge. And give us, Lord, all the information. And give us, Lord, all the information. That we need to fight this battle. That we need to fight this battle. With, with targeted weapons. With targeted weapons. Rest upon us by the spirit of understanding. Rest upon us the spirit of understanding. That we shall understand. We shall that meditate on your word and have understanding. And we shall meditate on your word and have understanding. And be able to use them as Jesus will do. And be able to use them as Jesus will do. Rest upon us, Lord, by the spirit of wisdom. Rest upon us by the spirit of wisdom. So that we can use the knowledge that we have gathered. So that we can use the knowledge that we have gathered. With the wisdom that comes from above. With the wisdom that comes from above. Rest upon us by the spirit of counsel. Rest upon us by the spirit of counsel. By which I receive counsel from you. By which I receive counsel from you. And not from the devil. And not from the devil. And we'll be able to recognize the difference. And we'll be able to recognize the difference. By the spirit of discernment. By the spirit of discernment. Rest upon us, Lord. Rest upon us, Lord. By the spirit of might. By the spirit of might. So that. So that as your word comes out of our mouth. So that as your word comes out of our mouth, we shall have victory. We shall have victory. That will be demonstrated physically. That will be demonstrated physically. In, any, in every area of our lives. In any area of our lives. And our, and our, and our family. And our family. For it is not by might. For it's not by might. Not by power. Nor by power, or by the spirit of the Lord, by the spirit of the Lord, that every mountain, that every mountain, shall move before us, will move before us, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, rest upon us, Lord, rest upon us, Lord, by the spirit of the fear of the Lord, by the spirit of the fear of the Lord, that we shall plug into the power of God. That we shall plug into the power of God. And never disconnect from God. And never, never disconnect from God. That we shall remember always. And we shall remember always. That we can do nothing without him. We can do nothing without you. We are nothing without you, Lord. That it is by power. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit. That we shall win this battle. That we shall win this battle. Victory is ours. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Yes, Lord. Let us bless the Lord and thank him. Thank Father, you, Lord. Father, we bless you. We thank you. Thank you we Lord. submit ourselves to you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Our Father. Yes, Lord. The captain of our salvation, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The captain of our salvation. Father, yes, we fight Lord. our battles under your banner. Jesus. Yes. The banner of Jehovah Nisi. Yes, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Blessed be your name forever. We give yes, you Lord. praise and glory. Yes, In Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now let's go to Daniel 9.
Okay. Yes, no. Daniel Nine. We're going to start from verse four. Okay. Do you all have King James? We can read it together. Yes, we have, I have King James. Okay, good. So I'm going to just pray some introduction, then we will go, then we will okay. go on. Okay. Father, we come to you, God, as a family. Yes. Lord. Our families, on behalf of our families, as your as part of your household, your family, mm. representing, oh God, our families on our father's side, our mother's side and our in-law side, and even the families of our children's in-law side. We come before you, God, with sackcloth and fasting and ashes, recognizing, oh God, that all that has happened to us and why the strong man is still active is because of sin, the sin of our ancestors and our own sins. Therefore, we come before you, God, and we bring your word before you in repentance. And we pray unto you today. Verse 4, let's go. Yes. We pray unto the Lord. The Lord. And I, my... prayed, and I prayed unto the Lord my God. Let's go on. And made, and made my confession. And said, and said oh, oh Lord. Lord the, the great, great and dreadful God, keeping, keeping the covenant and the mercy to them that love that him and, and to them that keep his commandments. We have, we have sinned, sinned and committed iniquity and, and have, have done wickedly and, and have, have rebelled even by departing from, from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we had Hearken unto thy unto servants, the, the prophets, we speak in thy name him to, to our, our kings, our, to princes, our princes, and to our, our fathers, forefathers, and, and to all the people of the land. land. Oh, Lord. oh Lord, righteousness, righteousness belongs unto, unto thee, thee, but unto, but unto us, us confusion of faces, as, as at this day, day to the men. To we, so you have to mention the names of your families here. Okay. Your father's side, mother's side, in law's side. Okay. Okay. So Lord, don't say it quietly to yourself. Okay. Father, we pray, Lord, yes. for our families. Pray for our families, for four family, for say family, Kunto family, Amaku family, in the name of Jesus. Yes, I finished mentioning the names, mommy. Okay. Yes. So we now go to unto all Israel that are near. We're still in verse four. Sorry, okay. we're still in verse seven. Okay. So we go down to that are near, that are near, and that are far off through, through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because, because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face, to our, to our kings, kings, to our, our princes. princes to our fathers, because, because we have sinned against thee. To the, to the Lord, Lord our God belong mercies and, and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against him. Neither, neither have, have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which is said before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all, all our families have our trans progressed thy law yeah. on our father's side, mother's side, in law's side, 
Even Mama, in the lost side of our children. In loss. Even by departing. Yes. That they might obey thy okay. voice. Therefore, Therefore, the curse poured is poured upon, upon us. And the, oath and the oath that is written, written in, in the, the law, law of Moses, the servant, the servant of, of God, God. because, we, because have we have sinned against him. him. And him. he has confirmed his words, <laughs> which, which is fake against us and, against, and against, against our judges that, that judged, judged us by, by bringing upon us a great, great evil. For under, for under the has not been done as I have been done upon our people. families. Upon our families. As, it is, as it is written in the law of Moses, this all, evil, the, all this evil, this evil is come is upon us. Yet, yet made we not our God, prayer before the Lord our God, God that, that we, we might, might turn from our iniquities and understand, and understand thy truth. Therefore, Therefore the Lord watched watch upon the evil and brought, brought it upon us. For, for the Lord, Lord our God is righteous in all his, in all his works, which, which, he he had, which he done. For, for we obeyed not his voice. voice. And now, O and Lord, now, O Lord our God, God that, that has brought thy people, people forth. forth out of the land of Egypt, of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has, and has gotten thee now as, as, as at this day we have we sinned. have sinned we have we done, done wickedly oh lord oh lord according, according to, to all the righteousness i beseech you let thy let anger and thy fury, and thy fury be turned away from our families from our family, our father's side, mother's side, 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 in side, lost side, and side. our children's in lost side. Fathers, our children's we lost are your holy mountain. We are your we are children mountain because of our sins, because of our sins, and for the iniquities of our fathers. Yes. Our, we and our people have and become people a reproach. I've become a reproach to all about, about us. About us. Now, now therefore, therefore, oh our, our God. Hear the prayer of thy servants and our and supplications. Cause thy face to shine upon, to shine upon our family that, that is desolate. For, the for thy name's sake, for the Lord's sake. Oh, my oh God. Lord God, oh my God, incline, incline thy your ear and, and hear. Open, open thine eyes, eyes and behold and our desolation. And we, the family, your the children, family, your children that are called by thy called name. By thy name. For, we do not, for we do not present our supplications for before thee, thee for our righteousness, for, righteousness, but but for, for thy the, great mercies. O oh Lord, Lord, hear. hear. O oh Lord, Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, Lord, hearken and do. And do. Defy not but for thine own sake. sake. Oh my God, oh, our God, for thy sake, before you now, we are we are people, your people, you are the people, and we are called by thy name. Amen. 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 Father, we present this word before you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, and we ask you, Lord, that you Amen. will use it to break the yes. stranglehold of the yes. dragon yes. over our families. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That you will use, oh God, to break Amen. the stranglehold of the enemy Amen. over Amen. our families. Lord, In the name Lord. of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That from this day forth, oh God, we will begin to see that yes, you have Lord. come down yes, to save Lord. us yes, and Lord. to deliver us yes, from Lord. the hand of the enemy. Yes, Lord. That from now on, oh God, Lord. He, he will be cast out. Yes. When we begin to cast him out, you will know that his time is up. Yes, and he Lord. will begin to cast out, be cast yes, out. Lord. Yes, Lord. All that concerns us. Yes, Lord. That your name be glorified. Yes. That we, O oh Lord, we begin Richie. to we begin to serve, we begin to serve you without yes. let, without hindrance. Yes, Lord. And without any demon, any strong man. 
Oh, Lay yes. claim to anything that belongs to us. Yes, Lord. In the yes. name of Jesus. Thank you, my dear. Blessed God. be the name of my dear God. God. Give Thank you praise you. and glory. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want us to quickly do the second part, and that okay. is reasoning with the Lord. The okay. one I said is in Ezekiel 18. Oh, Ezekiel 18. Okay, let me open it. Sorry, not 16. Ezekiel 18, 1 to 23. Okay, but I'm just go. going to read it in parts. Okay, we let want me... to reason with the Lord yes. that now that we have turned from our wicked ways and follow Jesus all these years, the yes. devil should not be yes. holding on to anything that belongs us because yes, of Lord. the covenant of our ancestors. Yes, that Lord. is what we want to do. Yes, Lord. God said, Come, let us reason together. Ezekiel Father, because 18. you say, come, let us reason together. That's why we are saying this. Yes. Now let's go to Ezekiel 18, 1 to 23. Okay, all right. I'm not going to read everything. Okay. But it is important to read scriptures because angels will hear. The right. Bible says they hearken to the voice of the word. Right. The word of the Lord came unto me again. Ezekiel 18, 1. Saying, What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion anymore to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine, and all the souls of the Father, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Verse 14. Verse 14 now. Now, so, verse 14 is talking about a wicked man. He mm. now says, verse 13 talked about the wicked, the wicked. Now, mm. verse 14 is saying, now if he beget a son that seeth all his father's sins, which he has done, and considereth, and does not such like, that has not eaten on the mountains, that has not lifted up his eyes to idols of the house of Israel, that has not defiled his neighbor's wife. Mm. 16. Neither has oppressed any or withholding the pledge, neither has spoiled by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry and has covered the naked with a garment, that has taken off his hand from the poor, and that's not received usury with increase. That means you lend to other Christians without taking, without uh, taking interest. You mm. know we do that all the time. Right. That has executed my judgment and has walked in my statutes. He shall not die for the iniquity of his father. He shall surely live. Mm. Amen. Amen. Verse twenty. The soul that sinneth it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked turn from all his sins that he has committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Amen. Amen. Now, Dying does not always refer to uh, physical death. Right. It refers to spiritual death. It also refers to people can just be a living dead. Some people are living dead. The devil has taken everything from them. Hmm. Has taken their family from them, has broken their marriage, has taken their children. Some have problems. That's what all this die, die refers to that all mm. the things that died even though we're still alive it refers to that that mm. the devil no longer has any right to take anything that belongs to us mm. so just say after me here's the prayer okay lord lord you are the righteous judge of the universe you are the righteous judge of the universe i bring my case i bring my case and that of my family. And that of my families, Lord. 
Before you today. Before you today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word. That promises us. Uh, that promises us. Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. Our children will not die. My children will not die. From the sins of their parents. From the sins of their parents. Once they have turned from their parents' wicked ways. Once they are turned from their parents' wicked ways. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I rely solely. I rely solely. On your righteousness. On your righteousness. Which you purchased for me. Which you portrays for me. On the cross of Calvary. On the cross of Calvary. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I thank you. I thank you. For showing me the path of life. For showing me the path of life. I'm showing my family the path of life. And showing my family the path of life. I'm bringing us to Jesus. And bringing us to Jesus. Father God. Father God. I come under the cover. I come under the cover. With my family. With my family. Under the cover of the blood of Jesus. Under the cover of the blood of Jesus. To reason with you today. To reason with you today. On behalf of myself. On behalf of myself. My family. My families. And my and my generations. In my generation, generations to come. It is true. It is true. That our ancestors. That our ancestors. Served other gods. Served other gods. And sinned against you. And sinned against you, Lord. In other ways. In other ways. That I may not know. That I may not know. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy upon us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I confess. I confess. That I too served other gods. I too served other gods. Before I came to know the Lord. Before I came to know the Lord. And I walked in unrighteousness. And I walked in unrighteousness, Lord. But I have not turned away. But I have not turned away. I have now turned away. I have now turned away. From all these gods. From all these gods. And I totally renounce them now. And I totally renounce them now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father. Father. Let the blood of Jesus speak for me today. Let your blood of Jesus speak for me and my family today. And let every legal right. Let every legal right. Of the enemy. Of the enemy, the wicked one. Over our lives. Over our lives, my family's lives. Be broken now. Be broken now in Jesus' in name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Don't let us die, Lord. Don't let us die, Lord. Don't let us die on timely death in our families anymore, Lord. Don't let us die on timely death in our families anymore, Lord. Don't let our dreams die. Don't let our dreams die. Don't let our destinies die. Don't let our destinies die. Don't let our ministry die. Don't let our ministry die. Don't let our hopes die. Don't let our hopes die. Don't let our marriage die. Don't let our marriage die. Don't let our spouse die. Don't let our spouse die. Don't let our children die. Don't let our children die. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 When I when I send it to you, you will now deal specifically and go into details. Okay. Okay. All right. D details. So let's pray and close. Sorry? Mention my family's, my family's name. Yes. Okay. 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 You will see. You see. They are wrote it there in the in the books. Okay, mommy. So let's pray. Are there okay. any questions? No, it was powerful. I got a lot of, a lot of revelation and I'm really okay. I'm really encouraged. And, encourage. and anyway, you are going to you are going it's it is being recorded. Uh-huh. 
It's been recorded and you are going to listen again over and over. Okay, mommy. Yes. Okay. Therefore, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We mm -hmm. give you praise for this time out with you. We appreciate you for because you are God. You are king over our lives. We thank you for bringing us to that day when the yoke of the enemy will be broken from our necks and the necks of our families. Where the burden of the enemy will be lifted up from our necks so that we can serve you without let or hindrance. So that we can enter into our promised land and enjoy everything that you put there for us. Yes. Blessed be your name forever. In the name of Jesus. As we depart now, Lord, we ask you that you cover us with your blood, that you protect us from every counterattack of the enemy. In the name of Jesus. You, the captain of the 50, that you are waiting to counterattack us because we are seeking for our complete emancipation and liberation from you. If we be children of God, as Elijah said, let fire come into your camps and destroy you and your 50 and all your weapons and your armory. In the name of Jesus, we hide ourselves and our family members and all our loved ones. We hide ourselves in Christ, who is, who is in God. And we say, Lord, let your pillar of fire and cloud surround us and keep us safe from the enemy. In the name of Jesus, as you did at the Red Sea, the Bible says the pillar of fire and cloud separated them from the enemy so that they could not come near each other. Therefore, we ask, oh God, that you separate us from the enemy and cover us with your blood and keep us safe in you as we continue to war and fight and set our family and our generations free by the atonement work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Blessed be your name forever. We give you praise and glory and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you so much. I'll be looking forward to the yes. prayer that you send me. Yes. Let's share the grace. The May grace the, of our Lord Jesus Lord Christ, Christ. Christ. The love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. For sure. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Hallelujah. God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.